Clubhouse. Uh, so today we are going to make a um, Japanese milk bread. This bread is really nice, light, and fluffy. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy that. So to a small saucepan, you're going to add two tablespoons of flour. If you have bread flour, uh, that would be preferable, but I don't. So I'm just going to use uh, my all-purpose flour that I got. And then you're also going to add three tablespoons of whole milk or 2%, um, but you definitely want something with a higher fat content. And then uh, three tablespoons of water. All right, and now I'm going to mix this off the heat until there's no lumps. Just combining all these ingredients so that way, um, when I go put the heat on, it will uh, not pump up. So I'm gonna mix this and then come right back to you. All right, so my uh, water, flour, and milk mixture is well combined. So I'm gonna go ahead and light the stove. Um, you should have a grown up to help you do this. And then um, now we're gonna just whisk this um, or stir it constantly, uh, about three to five minutes until it starts to thicken. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, and I come back to you. You're, we're basically making a roux, and then this is going to go into our bread and give it that nice uh, texture. It's actually really great. So I'll see you back here in three minutes. All right, this didn't take long to do. Um, basically, you're going to stir it until uh, your mixture looks like mashed potatoes is um, how I would describe it. Um, and then we're going to have to let this cool till it gets to room temperature to put it in our dough. We don't want to... Um, this is a yeast bread, and we don't want to kill the yeast. Yeast, remember, like it, like a little hot, but not too hot. So I'm going to go ahead, put this in a bowl, and let it cool down. And then I'm going to go gather my other ingredients. We'll see you back here. All right, let's talk ingredients for uh, our dough now. So I have that roux. You're going to use all of it in the dough. Um, that's ingredient number one, so you want to go ahead and make sure you make that. And then uh, we're also going to need uh, two tablespoons of milk powder. Um, I just get this from Kroger. It comes in a box like this, uh, or a little packet. Uh, it's inside the box. Now you're not going to use the whole packet as I, uh, you see here, but you know, you can add it to tea or coffee. Um, it, it makes a really good, um, you know, wet milk replacement. So we got the two tablespoons of the milk powder. You're going to want a um, quarter cup of sugar, just plain white sugar. You're going to need a teaspoon of table salt or sea salt, whatever kind of salt you have. You're going to need one tablespoon of uh, yeast. Then you're going to need a uh, half a cup of whole milk. And then an egg one egg, I've already cracked that and kind of mixed it up a little bit. Um, that way it's ready to be incorporated. You're going to need a quarter cup of melted butter. And then you're going to want two and a half cups of uh, red flour if you have it. If not, I'm just gonna use my all-purpose flour and see uh, how it turns out. All right, so um, let's go ahead and we're gonna add our um, flour and salt together. We always kind of do our dry ingredients. So that's going to be the flour and the salt. Get that mixed up first. And let's see, I got a spatula. What do we got? I'll just use this little spoon just to mix this together. Then everything else I would consider a wet ingredient, you know. I suppose I could probably put the milk powder in here too, but um, I don't know, I'm not going to. And then this is gonna be really good for when I um, combine the dry ingredients to the wet. I'm just scoop it in. Okay. Now, wet ingredients. Take my little spatula here. So we're gonna mix the um, brew that we got. It's really thick. Kind of looks like mashed potatoes, like I said. Um, and to this, we're gonna add the milk, everything really, eggs, and that's 
another reason why you want this to cool down to room temperature. If you have, um, you know, too hot of a roux here, you're going to cook your eggs. The sugar, milk powder, and the yeast. All right, so I'm gonna give this a good mix until it's combined. If you have a um, Cuisinart, go ahead and use that. But I can't figure out how to turn ours on in the background. The, um, there's no plug over there. Um, so we're just gonna do it by hand, which is, you know how they used to do it. This is like an ancient recipe and they definitely didn't have, um, you know, the KitchenAid in, in uh, you know, ancient Japan. All right, so I'm gonna go mix this until it's well combined and then I will see you back here. All right, so uh, for this next part, my uh, wet ingredients are pretty evenly combined, uh, nice and soupy in here. I'm using this big bowl because now I need to add the flour to this. And you can see I pulled my hair back. You might get messy if you're doing this by hand. So um, at first it's not so bad. I'm just going to add like a couple spoonfuls of the flour. Now if you have a sifter that would probably be even better, but I'm not. Um, we're just going to do a couple at a time. Mix it in. And um, when that's in there, we're going to add another batch. Um, you probably noticed that like, oh, that looks like way more than two and a half cups. I am making a double batch because um, I know this bread's going to smell really good once we have it in the oven and the vultures are going to descend and want to eat some bread. So um, I'm doing a double batch, but if you're doing this at home, go ahead and use the ingredients um, amount that I told you because that's going to make eight rolls. Or if your family really likes bread, you might consider doubling the recipe too. Um, I know in my house, this probably wouldn't make enough bread. Uh, so I do have a little bit more here. All right, this is mixed in. I'm gonna add another couple spoonfuls and I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this um, until everything's combined, okay? So uh, yeah, it's fun to mix. I'll see you back here in um, a few minutes when this is all in and I'm ready to knead. All right, so I've incorporated all the flour and it's looking a little bit more like a bread ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and knead this. You can use your hands. It's probably easier to use your hands, but um, I don't wanna get them messy. <laughs> it is kind of sticky work making bread. Um, so, I don't know, give it like a good minute of kneading. This is, where, this is um, how the gluten develops in the bread. Gives it lots of flavor. Um, Then after kneading it, I have a um, greased bowl over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, bread into the bowl. And it might not develop uh, double in size, but it will become kind of puffy because of the yeast in here. Um, we're just gonna let it rest for about 60 to 90 minutes. All right, and I already kind of kneaded this a little bit too. so. Grease bowl, bread goes in. Um, I'm gonna let this rest for about an hour um, and then come back and make the little rolls. Um, you're gonna wanna put this in like a warm place for that yeast to develop. And you don't wanna touch it, um, just let it do its thing. Another little side note, while you're uh, waiting for that bread to rise, um, it's a really great opportunity to clean up your mess, so that's what I'm going to do now. All right, guys, so my uh, bread has proofed, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it ready to go into the um, molds here that I have. I'm not gonna do um, like biscuit size ones, I'm gonna actually make a loaf. So I'm gonna put some flour down on my workstation, get flour on my hands, and then I'm gonna cut this in half. I made a double recipe, right? Okay, and then put this one aside. We're gonna cut this into four pieces, four equal size pieces. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to show you how to do one of these, and then we'll do the rest uh, off camera. So you're just going to roll this out. Put a little flour on your um, baking sheet if you want. Just roll it flat, and then you are going to roll this up, just like so. Place it in your tin. Okay, so I'm going to do four of these, um, and I'll show for each loaf. I'll show you how that looks. All right, so um, we're going to let these uh, rest for about another hour. Um, so cover these and just let them rest in that warm place for like another, and it doesn't even have to be an hour, like 40 to 50 minutes is fine too. Um, just so they, again, puff up. All right, so um, my bread has risen and I'll show you what you should be looking for um, to see if it's ready to go to the oven. And my oven has um, preheated to about 350. Um, oh yeah, see my rolls are looking nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an egg wash on here. So I just mixed together like a couple tablespoons of milk with an egg. And I don't have a pastry brush, so I'm just gonna take a gloved hand and kind of rub the um, egg wash over the tops of my bread. Now this is gonna give my um, bread like a nice dark uh, color. nice sheen. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that into the oven. It's going to take about a half an hour to break, uh, to bake. And I'll see you guys back here when it is done. Okay, so I just took the bread out of the um, oven here. It kind of has like, if you knock on it, a hollow sound. Um, so I think this will be really good. Um, but if you do have a thermometer, you want the inside of your bread to be like 180 or 190 is the temperature that's done. So um, I'm gonna let this cool and I'm gonna enjoy a nice slice of my bread.